Good afternoon. Today is World Hypertension Day. Joining us today is Dr. Alan Vaval, a cardiologist with Albany Associates in Cardiology. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First off, let's start with the basics. What is hypertension? Uh, hypertension is defined as a, a systolic blood pressure of 130 over diastolic blood pressure of 80 on successive visits um, that uh, can lead to uh, secondary organ dysfunction or can lead to myocardial dysfunction. It's often called the silent killer. Why is that? Well, uh, it's called the silent killer because many patients uh, oftentimes don't present any symptoms, don't present with any symptoms of hypertension, uh, which is why screening is so important. Um, patients who have symptoms of hypertension are often in later stages of disease and have end organ dysfunction or myocardial dysfunction or severely elevated blood pressure. So um, uh, the, the, the strategy that I think most patients should take when trying to uh, uh, manage hypertension or screen for hypertension is to follow with a primary medical doctor at least once yearly uh, for screening blood pressure measurements and, uh, and for diagnosis. Um, when does somebody become diagnosed with hypertension? Well, if you have uh, elevated blood pressures on multiple visits without a secondary cause, uh, you'll uh, receive a diagnosis of essential hypertension. And um, it's important that the blood pressure be checked accurately uh, in a seated position with your back supported and arms supported uh, with proper devices and uh, obviously not with any other um, confounding factors, such as if you're in a significant amount of pain or if you're um, very stressed or agitated or if you just had some physical exertion, checking your blood pressure at that time will lead to false, falsely elevated values. Um, but in the absence of those confounding factors, if you have elevated blood pressures on multiple visits, then you are given a diagnosis of hypertension. And what are some of the risk factors for high blood pressure and hypertension? Um, there are many risk factors, the most, the most common of which are, um, are weight, uh, elevated weight, a BMI above 25, which gives you the diagnosis of being overweight, the BMI over 30, which gives you the diagnosis of obesity, um, is a common risk factor for hypertension. Other risk factors include um, significant family history, um, diabetes mellitus, um, elevated uh, blood cholesterol levels, um, so those are all common risk factors. And what are some things that patients can do to keep their blood pressure um, on the lower end of the spectrum? Well, I think uh, eating a diet that's uh, rich in plants and, and fruits and less uh, rich in meats and starches uh, uh, is, is, is one way to keep your blood pressures uh, well controlled or to prevent the onset of hypertension. Um, obviously, maintaining an ideal body weight is also um, very uh, protective. Um, uh, exercising uh, regularly and increasing cardiovascular fitness is also, um, is also an important means of uh, warding off hypertension. And you know, what the American College of Cardiology recommends is sort of uh, 30 minutes of uh, physical activity daily uh, for five days a week to total 150 minutes uh, in a week. Uh, and that should include breathless, breathlessness, not just you know, leisurely walking. And I tell patients, if you can have a conversation while you're exercising, you're not exercising, you should be breathless, you should be maybe sweating. And that type of an activity for 30 minutes a day, five days a week, um, is, is what we recommend. Um, so diet, exercise, um, maintaining a healthy weight are the, you know, the primary uh, things that patients can do at home to prevent the onset of not only hypertension but cardiovascular disease in general. And how important is it to keep your sodium levels in check? Um, you know, we, in general, I, I recommend that patients not eat uh, a diet that's very high in sodium, uh, but that, that, plays a, uh, that plays a role once you have the established diagnosis of hypertension. In general, if you're eating a healthy diet, rich in plants, um, low, uh, low in meats, and uh, uh, low in uh, 
uh, starches, you should generally not be getting uh, a high amount of sodium in your diet. And uh, lastly, when should somebody go to an emergency room if they think they're having uh, any kind of extreme symptoms of high blood pressure? Well, uh, if, you're, if you're having symptoms related to hypertension, I tell people that that's probably not the way you want to be diagnosed, um, and that's why I stress prevention and follow-up yearly with your primary medical doctor. But in general, patients with severe hypertension can start to have symptoms. Um, as, mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, patients with um, early hypertension often don't have any symptoms. But if you're having symptoms of headache, um, obviously blurry vision, um, uh, generalized fatigue sometimes can be a symptom of hypertension. Uh, obviously, patients can present with chest pain and shortness of breath as well, um, with very poorly controlled blood pressures. Or sometimes swelling in the legs um, can be a manifestation of severe hypertension as well. Um, so all of these tend to indicate that there's some other organ dysfunction, um, and that's not when you want to present. You want to present ahead of time before you develop um, what we call end organ dysfunction. Okay. And um, what are the available treatments for high blood pressure? So there, there are many treatments for high blood pressure. Um, obviously, first we try to really target diet, exercise, and um, and body weight. Uh, uh, patients with uh, hypertension, essential hypertension, will often need antihypertensive agents. Uh, there are multiple classes of antihypertensives. We generally choose them based on any other uh, comorbid diseases that may be benefited by the agent we choose. So for example, if somebody's a diabetic, we may choose an ACE inhibitor to prevent <coughs> uh, diabetic-induced renal disease. Um, or if somebody has coronary artery disease, we may choose a beta blocker uh, to uh, provide some of the beneficial effects of beta blockers to uh, their coronary artery disease and their hypertension. So the, the choice of antihypertensive agent is often uh, guided by the person's other comorbid medical conditions. Great. So main point here, get checked annually. That is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you so much, Dr. Vival. Appreciate you taking the time today to talk about hypertension. Okay.